Hi, I'm Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And the topic for this week is about the reset workspace button and the new, uh, new workspace tool on the top of our toolbar. And so let's go ahead and get started learning about some of the new things in the latest update to the Floriani software. Um, so I'll close my picture and just come onto the screen. And it's this tool right here that I was talking about because we often hear people say, oh, I lost my slow redraw toolbar, or maybe my color palette's gone missing. And right up here at the top, there's a button. And if you click on it, it has an option to reset the workspace. And I think that's important to know. Um, I mean, if that doesn't reset your workspace, then I think the next suggestion would be to close the program and start it again, maybe even restart Windows. You know, that's not a bad idea every once in a while too. Um, but notice that when I click on that workspace button, there's also options to delete a workspace and save a workspace. So you can manage them. Um, it comes with the reset and the FTCU2. If you choose FTCU2, it'll put your properties box beside your sequence view, kind of like I have mine quite often done. Um, you are allowed to move your toolbars to you know wherever you want to. Every toolbar kind of has um, like a gray bar at the top that you can click and drag to move them. You can make them floating. You can close them if you're not using them. If you're not sure where they went and you click on the toolbars drop down menu, any of them that were turned off will be unchecked and you can just check to put them back on again and pick them up with their gray bar and put them on the empty workspace wherever you want them to. Notice that every tool kind of has a little set of four dots at the left hand side of it and that basically becomes the handle to be able to pick up that entire kind of group of sort of stuff and pick it up and move it to somewhere else. See that? So you can pick them up, move them, put them wherever you want and then when you're done you can click on the button and save it. And that's why I have Trevor's favorite workspace, because that's kind of like where I wanted my tools to be. And, you know, because I'm challenged by my laptop size, it's a smaller laptop. And so I don't have a lot of workspace. And when I want to do sketching, I want more area in the middle. And so I've got my like favorite sketching workspace. But then when I want to do sort of like design editing, I'll go to my favorite one or kind of like FTCU2 where I'll have my sequence view on the side here and I'll have my design properties sort of large and available to work on. And so I think that's an important tool to know about, especially if you ever feel that your workspace is missing something, just knowing that there's a button right here and you can click on it to choose to reset your workspace. Now, um, all that said, I also want to talk about a couple of other changes in the latest version of the software. Um, I love to use the browsing tabs on the right hand side to browse. And if I click on like browser, it allows me to click on any location of my computer. And so I'm going to click on a folder where I've got some embroidery designs and click on designs and I can browse through and see them. You can just scroll through to see the designs. And one of the great things about this is if you want to make a layout, you know, you can click and drag to bring a butterfly on your screen, maybe put an embroidery hoop on your screen. Maybe it's too small and so you want to pick a bigger hoop. So you go and choose, you know, a larger embroidery hoop and based on format. So whatever format you select, then it'll have the hoops for that format kind of available to you. And when you have a larger hoop, then you might be able to put kind of more embroidery in your hoop. And so you can go back to your design tab and keep dragging in you know, the butterflies of your design. And so that's why I love the layout tab. But what I want you to notice is when I use the layout tab, when I use this designs tab, I guess not a layout tab, when I use the designs tab to drag the designs in and make a layout, um, there's a change because in the build 3811, the software used to automatically convert my PES files into outlines. But notice now that all three designs came in as just the raw stitch data, and you can of course convert them to outlines if you want to, but it doesn't happen automatically. And so that was a small change that we made. Um, basically, if you um, want to edit the raw data, you can just bring them in and you know resize them or put them together and then save them again. But if you wanted to allow the software to you know change the stitching or add new stitches or anything like that, you would need to right click. 
and choose the option for convert to outlines. And that will basically turn it into like a run stitch. And it may be several run stitches, but the concept is it makes um, it more editable. And that way, you know, you can resize your design. And if you bring in designs that are filled in, like these kind of designs, it makes them more scalable because if I select it and ask for the convert to outlines, then notice that when I select that, it tells me at the bottom that there's like 1,897 stitches in my selection. Well, if I oops, select it and if I use a handle to click and drag to make it larger, the software can generate new stitches. And now in my selection, there's 2,000 and what's that exactly say? 869. So that's the concept of why you would want to convert to outlines and you still can, but it doesn't happen automatically. If I come over here and I find a cute little design and I bring it onto my workspace, those cherries will still be the original stitches. So it gives you the option. Do you want to change them? Yes or no. Um, one more thing I'll talk about in today's video that's kind of a change from the previous build. And that is, um, so I'm going to click new design. And notice that I have a new design and I can come in here and I can get a cupcake and put it on here and maybe I can put some text around it or create some kind of a layout with multiple, you know, designs of cherries and all these things, marshmallows, whatever you want to put. Um, when you're done, you need to create that Floriani WAF file. And the real benefit of the WAF file is there are so many, but just as an example, you can put the design notes in here, you know, and if you make any changes to it, the best place to save it is the WAF file. And when you click on save, it will ask you to save it as a WAF file. Now you don't have to make a WAF file. You could make it a PES if you want. Maybe you're, so, you know, you don't want to make the WAF, that's fine. You can change it to PES. And so if I just put it on my desktop and call it, you know, Trevor and call it PES format and click save, that design saves to my desktop as a trevor.pes. So the change in the software is the design tab still says design two. So the priority is given to the WAF file. If I save, save and I put it on my desktop and I call it like today dot WAF and click save, now my design tab is called today.waf. And if we were to like add more elements to it, all I would have to do is click save and it would update my WAF file. Now, if you want to make a PES file of this, you choose file and save as. And when you save it to PES format, it'll make that file for you today.pes. Um, but it does not change the tab. It's still called today.waf. And the reason for that is because a lot of times um, when we save a design that we're working on, if we save it to PES file to like a USB memory stick, and then we take the this memory stick out of the computer, and then if you're working on it and you click save, well, that memory stick's not in the computer anymore, and it kind of leaves the software wondering, where am I supposed to save this? And it, and it, and it kind of fails. And so this is why we're giving the priority to the WAF. You can do file save as and make as many stitch formats as you want, but it only kind of remembers the name on the tab of the WAF file. So if you start up a new design and it's simply called design three and it doesn't have any, you know, and you make some embroidery. So you get your thread, you know, you get your sketch a stitch tool and you make a beautiful sketch. And when you're done, you want to save it and you click save. If you save it as the WAF file first, It'll have a name and a location and the software will know where, you know, you'll know where to find it again. If you don't save the WAF and you save it as a PES, that's possible. You know, I could make a PES out of this and call it design three and save it to my workspace. But up here, it's, um, it doesn't remember that. If I click save, it's still going to ask me, where do you want to save it? Because it'll only remember where you save the WAF. And it, so you're certainly meant to make PES and Jeff and all the other formats. But if I go Trevor 2 or something like that, and I save it as a PES, I'll have a file on my desktop called Trevor 2, but this tab is still saying Design 3. If you choose Save and call it, you know, whatever you want, Trevor, you know, 2, you know, Trevor 2, 
WAF, now the file will be named Trevor2WAF. And so that is a small difference and a few little things that are different in the latest update to the software. I hope you enjoyed today's video and learning a little bit more about FTCU um, and the Floriani program. And until next time, have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.